more into business with the African Continental Free Trade Area implementation phase entering into force. This continues to advance economic development of uh, the Africa continent. Now, the video we're going to watch explains the history as well as the background of the agreement and the situation of uh, interregional trade in Africa. Africa is the second largest continent in the world with a total of 55 countries. Some of them are among the fastest growing economies in the world. But trade within the continent is the lowest in the world. Africa trades more with the rest of the world than with itself. Why is that? There are several reasons for this. Those who want to trade within Africa must overcome many difficulties. Long waiting times at the borders, a lack of or poor transport routes, partly opaque bureaucracy or time-consuming export regulations. This increases the costs and makes trade on the continent unattractive. These hurdles are particularly difficult to overcome for retail traders. But there is a dream. Many institutions and partners have been working to create a common market since the 1960s. This is intended to unite the continent and lead to greater prosperity in the various African countries. The African Continental Free Trade Area, AFC-FTA, marks an important step towards realizing this dream. The trade ministers of the African Union started negotiations at the end of 2015. After nearly three and a half years, the Free Trade Area officially entered into force on May the 30th, 2019, with more than 22 ratifications. A significant historical and diplomatic success, as well as a major step towards a united and economically strong Africa. The AFC-FTA has the potential to quadruple intra-African trade. The framework conditions for trade, investment and employment in Africa are thus now being created in several phases. And now, talking about the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, I'm joined by Eme Dushime, who is uh, the curator Global Shapers Kigali. She's also uh, a lawyer, uh, yeah, by profession, I believe, and uh, she's also a Yali uh, Fellow 2019. But she's here to basically uh, talk with us and share with us ideas on what she thinks about the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. Now, Eme, you're very welcome to our news bulletin. Thank you for having me. Right. Now, as we talk, there are about 27 countries that have uh, submitted the instruments of ratification uh, for the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. And I would say basically it's half the yeah. number of countries yeah. on, on, on the continent. Do you think the progress is, is steady as it, as, and is going the way it should be? Yes, because uh, first of all, I believe that moving from 22 uh, countries, which was the mandatory uh, requirement, to 27 countries, and now we're already almost halfway, actually more than half, right. uh, exactly half, right? right? So I do believe that in the future, we are going to have more countries even ratify. But whether or not they ratify the, the continental free trade area, I think it will still be implemented because we, we have passed the threshold of 22 countries. Right. Now, there has been fears of uh, protectionism, you know, from different countries because they believe maybe their economies uh, are strong enough to, su to sustain themselves. They don't need any sort of like free movement of goods and, and people. What do you think is the role of the African youth in making sure that they, they push for policies that open up, you know, skies and, you know, borders of different African countries that are trying to protect uh, their economies per se? So I would say that the role of the youth is to ensure that we first of all change our mindsets because at the end of the day we have a huge percentage of population that's made up of the youth. So essentially it means that in the future it's the youth that will be running the, the continent, continent I would say. So when we move from the ideology of someone is coming after my job or right. someone is coming after my country or probably the benefits the natural resources in the country, Precisely. the opportunities. Yes, I would want to move to South Africa or to Mozambique freely and um, become African, not because I'm Rwandan, but because I'm African. Now, talking about movement, there is a, a particular tweet I read recently on Twitter where someone was applying for a visa to go to Malawi and yes. they had to go to, to Kenya, you know, yes. the air transport and, and, you know, sometimes even getting denied of the visa to go to Malawi. There's still a problem when it comes to, um, you know, cross-border movement and open borders when it comes to you know, African citizens. Why do you think 
Africa needs to open its borders? You see, I think uh, for us to achieve the continental free trade area objective, we first of all have to have the movement of people because right. there's no way that goods are going to move with, uh, without people not moving at all. So I believe that the first step is to actually have a visa-free Africa where people can freely move, people can freely attend meetings, people can freely negotiate, and then goods will be able to move and will be able to achieve the objective of the continental free trade area. Now, recently, the, uh, the, the Rwandan immigration and immigration um, you also you know, brought forth a few reforms that you know facilitate more Africans to come mm -hmm. to the country mm -hmm. and Rwanda has spearheaded many initiatives when it comes to opening up uh, you know borders and issuing visa on arrival for many uh, Africans and also foreigners why do you think this is important not just for Rwanda but for Africa to open up borders you know and why do you think you know opening up borders would um, you know promote more trade more movement and actually a robust you know African economy I, I completely agree and I think that uh, it's so commendable for what Rwanda has done because it's setting the pace for other African countries and we have seen other countries coming on board like Benin right. and the Gambia because right now they have a visa-free Africa. But then I believe that having a visa-free Africa will promote, other than trade, I think it will create a, a platform for, for partnerships, you know, for probably if uh, we have two entities that want to transact and uh, export to China, it will be easier because there will be an increase in capital, the infrastructure is going to improve communication and other things yeah mm -hmm. so I believe that there's more of the benefit than any other any other skeptical reasons that people are afraid of well there has been also the issue of security yes. of which to Rwanda it's never been proven a problem but what do you think of the issue of security when it comes to opening our borders uh, I think uh, in as much as you open the borders, we definitely have to have policies that complement um, the continental free trade area. And I think among the fundamental policies is issues such as uh, the borders and probably how the entire process um, by itself is going to be run. You know, So I think um, the issue of security is not a big deal because definitely when the continental free trade area is um, being implemented, other, other um, laws are going to, complementary laws are going to come about here. Yeah. Now, you're a member of Global Shapers, yes. and uh, you're basically part of the World Economic Forum, so I believe it's, 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 it's a group as part of the World Economic Forum, and part of your mandate is to basically, you know, bring more, you know, youth together under the age of 30, I believe, yes. you know, to drive different policies and advocate for them. What are you doing and what is your role at the moment when it comes to, you know, promoting, advancing that agenda that Africa needs to come together? So first of all, I would say that at the Kigali Global Shapers, we are really excited about the continental free trade area. So what we did is that we partnered with the National Aviation Service, and then we brought, um, we came up with a competition called uh, the Visa Free Africa Reaching Competition, and it involved all African countries, basically young people in African countries, and that brought about 185 entries. So that's to show that we actually have so many voices that are unheard, and uh, we had the winner coming from Mauritius, and the, that runners up coming from Malawi, you know. Right. So basically, it's not just an Africa. Um, it's not just about Rwanda and Kigali Shapers move, uh, trying to move the, trying to drive the campaign, but it's all African youth coming together and saying, wait, we actually need a visa-free Africa. Right. We actually need to travel um, in other countries freely. We actually need to go and study. We actually need to go and work in other countries and develop our economy. Yeah. Right.